Hello and welcome to my talk on critical digital literacy through virtual exchange. These are my talking points and without further ado, I'm going to go straight into my talk. In her foreword to Innovative Language Teaching and Learning at University, Jocelyn Weiber, the former chair of the UK University Council of Modern Languages, talks about some of the buzzwords surrounding graduating language students. The global or transnational value-added graduate equipped with transcultural skills and the global mindset with digital literacies and e-skills that provide an additional dimension for cross-cultural communication. Now, virtual exchange, that is the bringing together of students from different corners of the world in online classrooms for collaborative project work, plays an important role in preparing these graduates, I think. Online intercultural exchanges, virtual exchanges, as O'Dowd and Lewis 2016 remind us, lead to the development of foreign language and intercultural communication skills, which students need to be able to gain for employment in a globalized labor market. In addition, they say, e-literacies and e-skills are developed through asynchronous tools and synchronous tools, which enhance the ability to communicate effectively in a foreign language and at distance. Now, I do not agree with the way of conceptualizing e-literacies or digital literacies development in and through virtual exchange as in addition. But I think that we'd all agree that virtual exchange allows language learners to develop a whole range of skills which are relevant, not only in terms of their employability, but also in terms of global citizenship, social inclusion, and potentially conflict transformation, which shifts the focus to the socio-political context within which today's graduates start their professional lives and the social obligation that comes with being trained and prepared through virtual exchange experiences. Now, within the set of skills we claim learners develop through virtual exchange, I'm particularly interested in digital literacy and the role it plays with regard to agency. And I mean agency in the sense of Paulo Freire's critical agency and consciousness. That is the understanding of one's power in relation to another power, the balance of fairness and equity in order to avoid and resist oppression, both being oppressed and oppressing others. And I also mean agency in a more stricter SLA sense, in the sense as Van Leer and others have operationalized the concept, namely the individual socioculturally mediated capacity to act, mediated by, for example, structures and tools. In our case, the sites, online sites, tools and applications we use in virtual exchange. Let's come back to digital literacy. It's a very broad and elusive construct which is why it's actually quite difficult to grasp and even more difficult to teach. It's referred to as digital literacy, digital competence, e-literacy, e-skills, computer literacy, media literacy, and so on and so forth, which clearly indicates that some perceive it mainly as the technical use of ICT, while others, and that includes myself, see it much more broadly as knowledge application. The new media consortium frames digital literacy as the critical and practical understanding of digital technologies in sociocultural settings where people are creators as well as observers. And they define digital citizenship as the responsible and appropriate use of technology, including digital communication, digital etiquette, health and wellness, digital rights and responsibilities. In the UK, so closer to home for me, one of the most cited efforts to develop a comprehensive framework for digital literacy comes from the work of GISC. They offer a slightly simpler definition, the capabilities which fit an individual for living, learning and working in a digital society. Keep the word fit somewhere at the back of your mind. I'll come back to that later. Um, they, their definition comes with a digital capability framework with six elements. You see them on the screen. The common feature of the work of GISC, this side of the big pond, and the new media consortium on the other side of the big pond, is that digital skills, literacies, and capabilities have both functional and critical dimensions and are key for exercising agency in the sense I framed it that is 
critical agency in technology mediated contexts. Um, now let's look at attempts to capture digital literacy in frameworks for a moment. In his critical review of such frameworks, Mark Brown from the National Institute for Digital Learning at Dublin City University said, says that, yes, there are indeed many models and frameworks across Europe, UK and the US. This is his pet example. Frameworks that aim to capture the nature of digital literacy and suggest ways to intervene to produce the skills and competencies which are considered necessary to live, learn and work successfully in the so-called knowledge economy. But he says they are highly problematic because they largely frame literacy as universal and decontextualized and are therefore often criticized as being instrumentalist, despite the fact that some, and we've seen just seen this, do include critical dimensions. The question is, he says, how do these frameworks get interpreted and taken up in practice? Properly contextualized digital literacy provision needs to be anchored in real life contexts. And this is where, in my view, virtual exchange has an important role to play and needs to step up its game. Because virtual exchange offers real life contexts and is by default mediated by technology. So people like us, virtual exchange practitioners, are in fact in an ideal position to foster critical agency in technology-mediated contexts. So it is not just training in digital literacy skills, but training in critical agency, which presupposes awareness of the socio-political context that I'm talking about. And our colleague Mark Pegram has pointed this out almost already a decade ago with regard to technology in teacher education. It's imperative that teacher training covers far more than technology and pedagogy, he said. Educators need a clear sense of the social and socio-political embeddedness of technology. Why is this addition, addition so important? Well, let's look at how Brown, Mark Brown puts it. First, he says, any definition of literacy, and therefore also digital literacy, is inherently political. Second, most efforts to propose definitions and develop related models and frameworks are disconnected from wider sociopolitical debates and underestimate the importance of the situated nature of educational practice. And finally, most models and frameworks ignore some of the drivers and even contradictory discourses that come with the goal of preparing more digitally skilled learners, workers, and citizens. What is often ignored, Mark Brown continues, is a very uncomfortable reality. Yeah? If digital literacy is core to what it means to be an educated person in the 21st century, he says, then our thinking needs to go beyond preparing people to fit, fit, the type of inequitable and socially unjust societies we have created over the past century. He calls for critical digital literacies which challenge us to reshape and reimagine our societies. And he goes even further. He says very clearly, as educators, we will fail to serve future generations if our definition of digital literacies does not help to produce a sense of agency both with and without new technologies to disrupt the world where 1% of humanity controls as much wealth as the bottom 99% of the population. Hence, the socio-political context is crucial to defining and understanding digital literacies and also the wider concept of digital citizenship. Such an approach will help us realize that our own uncritical consumption of technology as part of our daily life in the developed world is at the root of many of our problems, including the challenges of urbanization, climate change, and an increasingly unsustainable planet. So what's the task at hand? Doug Belshaw recognizes the point that Mark Brown, or what, what Mark Brown says in his eight essential elements of digital literacies. And he point, 
Planck refuses to put them into a ready-made framework for us. Culture, cognitive, constructive, communicative, confident, creative, critical, and civic. Some of the elements explicitly recognize the importance of learning how to use digital technologies for public engagement, pub global citizenship, and the enhancement of democracy. And it is in this spirit that I propose critical digital literacy skills development through virtual exchange because we are, as I've shown, in an ideal position to do so. What we do is by default mediated by technology and with each virtual exchange, we bring at least two different socio-political contexts together. And the project I'm currently involved with, the EVOLVE project, EVOLVE standing for Evidence Validated Online Learning Through Virtual Exchange, has set itself exactly this goal, or let's say one of its goal, is to use virtual exchange to foster critical digital literacy among the participants. If you want to find out more about what virtual exchange is, and why it is important, and the Evolve project in particular, then follow this link and you get an introduction uh, from me, <laughs> I've been interviewed for the project, and within the project, we use an e-portfolio <clears throat> to for students to document uh, their cooperation and conflict resolution skills through virtual exchange, and also the development of their critical digital communication skills, communication skills through virtual exchange, and. You, I'm going to go back here. So here uh, we, we give them some triggers and we ask them to collect pieces of evidence from their virtual exchange and to collect those pieces of evidence in their e-portfolio. And we do the same with the critical digital communication skills. Um, let's look at number one here. Give two examples from your virtual exchange that illustrate how you have established your presence online and have, have found your own voice during the exchange. Yeah. But we also ask him a little bit later on how you helped somebody else to develop an online presence and to find their voice in the exchange. And there are other figures. <clears throat> if you are interested, we can talk about this more on Friday, uh, the 19th of October at 9.30 Mountain Standard Time when I'll be talking about Evolve and I'll also be talking about Evaluate, the project that's mentioned in my abstract. And I'm really, really looking forward to meeting you online and to talk to you more about uh, critical digital literacy development through virtual exchange. Thank you for listening. <laughs>